welcome to my new video. This time you find us at Bendila in the southern highlands of New South Wales. We're on the hunt for a wombat selfie. Well, uh, let's hope we can uh, get a selfie of the wombat, that's uh, the aim of this trip. We'll, um, yeah, we're at a lovely campground here, we'll give you a bit of a look around later on. But our trip didn't start here. It uh, started in our hometown of Broken Hill. Hitch the van up and headed off. Travelled through Wilcannia and down to Ivanhoe. And then we hit some dirt tracks en route to Rankin Springs where we're going to stay the night. We found a nice little free camp next to the hotel in the park. Spent the night there. And then the next morning, uh, we're heading off to Bombian Caves. We stopped off at Withali Solo Art. Quite spectacular. Depicting the wheat and the sheep in the region and the hard workers. We then called into West Wylong. Went into the roundabout bakery a snack and a great cup of coffee before hitting the road again. We travelled through Crookwell and Taralga before descending into the Wombian Caves Valley. The road is very steep and only one way in some sections. We were greeted by many kangaroos when we arrived. They kept an eye on us while we set up camp. After setting up camp, we wandered around checking out the campground. The campground has many powered and unpowered sites with a large camp kitchen and new amenities block. As we were wandering through the day use area, a very friendly kangaroo came hopping over to check us out. Hello. You're very inquisitive, aren't you? That evening we walked down and checked out the Victoria Arch Cave under the lights. The lights come on at 7pm every night. The dark colouring inside the cave is caused by the smoke from bushfires and campfires within the campground. But it does look great under lights and the camera doesn't do it justice. The next morning we woke to a bush style alarm clock from the sounds of the many birds living in the area. After a big breakfast we walked to the top of the hill above the Victoria Arch Cave. This area is the meeting point for the guided tours. You also access the self guided caves from this point. There are something like 30 caves in the area but only 4 or 5 are open to the public currently. 
The first cave we set off to explore was the Fig Tree Cave, which is widely regarded as one of New South Wales' best self-guided cave experiences. Bit of ground support there for all the miners. I'd have to agree. Filled with stalactites, stalagmites, cave coal and other beautiful cave decorations, exploring the cave takes 45 minutes to an hour and finishes when you reach the broken stalactite platform. Here's a bit of wombat poo. Not content, we descended the limestone gorge track. We discovered another cave along the way, the Tinted Cave. This cave is self-guided and leads you out to the Tinted Cave balcony that overlooks the limestone gorge. Well worth the trek. We then descended further into the gorge, down the very steep stairs that are currently under repair.
What an epic view of the limestone gorge lined with blondie and marble. We then made the climb back up to the tour waiting area. The guide arrived and we descended into the Wollondilly Cave, the longest and most varied cave here, where a guide takes you through five incredible chambers over several levels, while sharing many stories and the history of the cave. Be prepared for narrow passageways, steep ladders that get your heart pumping. Well, just a little. two hours we made our way out of the cave back to the surface and we walked back to our camp unloaded our push bikes and went for a ride around many tracks around the area that you can get on your bike and explore Well, that brings our stay at Wombin Caves to an end. A bit sad to be leaving. We've had a great time exploring the area and can't wait to return. Seriously, if you're thinking about visiting here, do it. We spent two nights. I think next time we would probably allow three to four nights. There is still so much to explore. We packed up and headed out of the valley and passed through Goulburn onto our next spot, Berrimah. We pulled into the Berrimah River Reserve, located next to the Wing Caribbee River. The campgrounds are five minutes walk from the historic Berrimah village. Maximum stay here is two nights and uh, it's $18 per night. With limited budget camps in the area, this was a great choice. You need to book well in advance as it is very popular. Berrima is a historic village in the southern highlands of New South Wales. The village, once a major town, is located on the old Hume Highway between Sydney and Canberra. It is close to three major towns of the southern highlands, Mittagong, Barrel and Mossvale. That afternoon we walked into Berrimah village and checked out many of the historic buildings and shops. We finished off the day with a lovely walk along the river walking track. Lammy's well. Underneath this rock and escarpment. There's this crazy tree right on the edge of that cliff there.
sun setting over the river. The next morning we jumped in the car and set off to explore the area. Firstly we went through Mittagong and then uh, into Barrow and uh, went and checked out some lookouts looking over Mittagong and Barrow and the whole rear area. Fantastic view from the top of these hills. After checking out the views, we nipped back into Barrel, went to Donald Bradman Oval, and then checked out the museum. Couldn't resist having a few photos with uh, Sir Don himself, the statue. Barrel was believed to be the birthplace of Mary Poppins. There's a statue not far from the Donald Bradman Museum of Mary Poppins in the park. We then checked out the vast shopping centre in Barrow, had a beautiful lunch at a cafe and then went exploring Dirty Jane's. Dirty Jane's of Barrow is a huge warehouse housing over 75 independent dealers offering a vast range of vintage and antique pieces including furniture, hardwares, artwork, clothing, jewellery, kitchenware, glassware, china, collectibles and much more. It's well worth checking out. We then switched it up a bit and we travelled out to the uh, Boxvale tramway uh, walking track which was going to lead us to the 40 foot falls. We briefly stopped at the Upper Valley Welby Reservoir Checked out the water there running over the wall. The walk to the 40 foot falls is approximately seven kilometres return. Mainly flat except for the last section which is quite steep downhill or uphill on the return. Made our way through a cutting where the old tramway used to go. Continued walking got to an area where we then went down a steep steep path down to the river and the 40 foot falls. The walk was definitely worth it. After we finished exploring the area, it was time to make our way out. Up some ladderways, a bit, a bit rickety but it uh, looks safe. Along the narrow path, briefly stopping off behind the falls and having a look there. Now it was time to make it up the steep stairway. Back up. It's a bit hard to tell how long these stairs go for, but uh, we were pretty exhausted by the time we got to the top. Struggle coming up here. Middle of winter, but still got a pretty good sweat up. Eventually made it back to the car park. And then we recovered by having a right, cook up. Pork ribs. We've got some special sauce to go on there. We got today at the store. 
Rufus Teague made some sauce. Whiskey and maple. Mmm, sounds delicious. Yeah, we'll whack a bit of that on there once it's uh, getting close to finish and see how she goes. We should juice it right up. After two nights at Berrima Campground, we then packed up and set off towards Kangaroo Valley and our band dealer campground. We're getting closer to getting that uh, wombat selfie. Couldn't help pulling up and getting a photo with the wombat sign. And we pulled into the camp at Bendila, lovely little spot. Very large camp area. And we set up camp, and uh, our daughter is joining us uh, in Bendila for a few days, which was lovely to catch up with her. sat around and had a bit of a relax there for a while and then uh, yeah, took off and uh, done a bit more exploring of the area. We went for a delightful walk through the pristine eucalypt forests and the lush rainforest along the West Rim walking track. The track offers spectacular views of dramatic gorges and many waterfalls in the Morton National Park, approximately 3.5 kilometres return. We spent too much time checking out the Fitzroy Falls area and arrived back at Ben Dealer a little late. The sun was going down, which made it hard to get some good photos, but the wombats were everywhere when we got back to camp. So I tried to move in to get that selfie that I've been looking for for the whole trip. And as the sun was going down further, I pounced on this one here. And eventually, Move closer and closer. I managed to get that selfie. This is our camp here at uh, Bendila. Nice little spot. We've just woken this morning to pretty heavy fog. This is the campground. Plenty of wombats wandering around last night. A little wombat poo there. Come around last night and they rub themselves on your wheels. Have a bit of a scratch. A couple of times during the night I could feel the van shaking. A good old time they do. After breakfast, we jumped in the car and headed down to Berry. We're going to visit 
the famous donut van. Just turned up in Berry at the famous donut van. Can't wait to get something. Hi ladies. Woo! Wait for traffic to get across the road. Come on, carry out cars, we're in a hurry. Tell you what, the donuts didn't disappoint. Best donuts I've ever had. On the, on the way to our next spot, the Belmore Falls, we called into the Hampton Swimming Bridge. Checked out the river below. Another very nice spot. Check this out. Goldmore Falls must be one of the most spectacular waterfalls in the southern plains. This two-tiered waterfall cascades down the mountainside with such force you can really feel the energy. We made sure we allowed ourselves plenty of time to get back to the Bendila Camp Reserve again to check out the wombats. And the wombats didn't disappoint today. Pretty cute, huh? They were everywhere. Yeah. Pretty cute. We were so excited, there was selfies getting taken left, right and centre. And the wombats were just so friendly and so calm. Well, we'll end this video here. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. And please subscribe to my channel. See you next time. We had a great time here and I recommend it to any family to get out and explore this area.